Father in heaven, we uh, thank you, Lord, for your love for us. We thank you for your grace, your mercy that you've extended to us today, Lord. And uh, even as we look back to Calvary, we thank you, Lord, for the blood and redemption and atonement that we see in Christ Jesus and how, because of his blood, our sins are forgiven and we are redeemed. And uh, we can serve you now, Lord, because of that. And so we thank you, Lord, for that great grace. Now we pray as we look into the book of Numbers uh, that we would gain the biblical truths, the timeless truths that we find here and apply it to our lives. And uh, we pray the Holy Spirit of God would uh, illuminate the truths and speak to our hearts. We just ask that you would do a work in our midst. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All right. So sa pag-aaral natin ng book of Numbers, natuklasan natin na ano ang tema ng aklat ng Numbers? So, ang theme ng Numbers, Wilderness, Wanderings. Pagala-gala sa kagubatan. Wilderness, Wanderings. At naalala ninyo yung geography? Ano ang wilderness na kanilang inikot, pinag-ikot-ikutan ng 40 years? Not Sinai. Kadesh Barnea. Kadesh Barnea. Okay, so now uh, we have a... Meron tayong outline sa book of Numbers dahil ito ay merong tayong 36 chapters. So 36 ang chapters natin sa book of Numbers. 36 chapters at pwede siya nang divide sa ay, tatlong bahagi hindi dalawang bahagi tatlo ang bahagi nito so there's three uh, divisions to the book of numbers yung unang from chapter 1 to 9 this will be at Sinai at Sinai Mount Sinai lumabas sila sa Egypt nagdalawang taon sila sa Sinai at ngayon ready na silang humayo patungo sa Canaan talaga para sakupin yung Canaan kaya lang pagdating nila sa Kadesh Barnea Kadesh Barnea Imbis na sakupin nila yung Canaan na napakalapit lang sa kanila, natakot yung bansang Israel dahil sa bad report ng 12. Majority wins. Eh, yung majority mali. Lagot yung Israel. So that will be from chapter 10 to 21. Pal- palpak sila. So imbis na biro mo, 40 days lang, pwede na nilang sakupin yung Canaan yung 40 days naging 40 years. So lahat ng 20 year old pababa, uh, lahat ng 20 year old pataas ay hinintayan nilang mamatay sa kagubatan ng Kadesh Barnea. Sayang. And from 22 to 36 at Moab. Moab. So, sa geographic notebook natin na kung naalala ninyo, yung Moab ay nasa labas lang ng Canaan. Okay? So, naka-station dito yung second generation. Yung mga 19-year-old pababa. Na hindi nila nakita yung himala ng Diyos ng paglabas nila sa Egypt. Wala silang malay patungkol doon. They were too young or not existent. Now they are ready to enter into Canaan after yung first generation ay namatay. Sino lang yung naiwan sa first generation? Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb. Si Moses, did he not? Hindi siya pinayagan ng Diyos na pumasok. So, all right. So, Arian, sa kabila ka. Yep, no problem. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> 
Parang hindi pa nagkape. <laughs> All right. So, uh, before yung second generation pumasok at sakupin yung Canaan, binigyan sila ng review ni Moses. And so, ang sinabi ni Moses, ito ang dahilan kung bakit dapat sakupin yung Canaan. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, darkness was upon the face of the deep, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, at rinehearse ni Moses yung Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Number, Deuteronomy. And so we are now in the fourth book of Moses. All right? Now, tandaan natin, ang Holy Spirit ang may akda ng mga salita ng Diyos, si Moses ang tagapagsulat. He is the writer, the author is God. And, pero ginamit ng Diyos si Moses. Uh, so hindi natin madidisqualify yung karunungan na natut- na experience ni Moses, dinala niya yan sa pagsusulat at uh, pagrepresent sa bayan ng Israel. God constituted them a nation when they exited Egypt and stayed at Sinai. Dito sila tinaguyod bilang tao, nation. Tapos, dinala sila dito, dinala sila dito, and papasok na sila sa kinan. So, pag na-master natin yung numbers at saka Deuteronomy, na-complete na natin yung first five books ni Moses, meron na tayong magandang idea sa history ng Israel at ang pangako ng Diyos na gamitin ang Israel bilang pangunahing bansa na magpapatutuo sa Panginoon. Alright? And then, pasok tayo sa book of Joshua and so on and so forth. Alright. So now we are in chapter 3. So here in chapters 1 to 9, You from 1 to 4, from chapters 1 to 4, organization. Ino-organize lang ng Diyos yung tribo ng Israel at saka yung um, tribo ng Levites. So, may arrangement tayo na kung naalala ninyo yung last lesson natin. So, let's see here. From chapters 1 to 4 is organization. And we are now in chapters 3 and 4. So, north, south, east, west. At yung tabernacle ay nasa kalagitnaan ng mga tribes. Ayan yung tent ng tabernacle. May tribes dito tatlo. May tribes dito tatlo. Okay? So that was chapter 2. Yung pinag-aralan natin last week. And now, chapter 3 begins the organization of the Levites and the priests. Sila naman, titira sila dito. Okay? So we will look at that. <clears throat> Let's see. No, Numbers chapter 3. Numbers chapter 3. At maganda talaga yung order ng Panginoon. He is a God that is highly organized. A God. Biro mo, there's 2 million people. You have to manage and, uh, the uh, daily operations and needs of 200 people. Uh, 200 million people. <laughs> That's a lot of people. All right? 2 million or more. All right. So Numbers chapter 3, verse number 1. These also are the generations of Aaron and Moses in the day that the Lord spake with Moses in Mount Sinai. These are the names of the sons of Aaron. So ngayon, ito yung family ni Aaron. Nadab, the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. So he has four sons. Verse 3. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priests which were anointed, whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. So, Aaron is the high priest. Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar are priests. Not every Levite is called to be a priest. Within the tribe of Levi, there is a division between Levites and priests. So, 
Yes, the entire tribe of Levi is priestly, pero sa, sa loob ng tribe, merong nagsaserve na humahakot sa mga gamit ng tabernacle. Hindi sila priest. Pero meron din dun sa loob ng tribe na nag-aalay ng mga sacrifices. They serve in the tabernacle. Sila yung mga priest. Okay? So, there are Levites and priests within the tribe of Levi. Malino ba yun? Not everybody can offer sacrifices. Not, not everybody is called to serve in the tabernacle, but all of them are called to serve around and for the tabernacle. Maybe yung role nila, uh, sila sa kortina, kayo dito sa mga furniture, sa loob ng tabernacle, sa'yo yung lamp, sa'yo yung table, sa'yo yung altar, and so on and so forth. So let's look at this. Verse number four is a sad, sad reminder sa rebellion ni Nadab and Abihu. Verse number four, And Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord when they offered strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. And they had no children. So let me, let's stop here and look at this. Naalala ba ninyo, I don't know if you do remember, pero nung nag-aaral tayo ng Book of Leviticus, nakita natin na nag-aalay ng strange fire itong mga anak ni Aaron, this Nadab and Abihu. This would be Leviticus chapter number 10. So you can go back to Leviticus chapter 10 and see the error of Nadab and Abihu offering strange fire unto the Lord. So let me ask you a question. Does God receive every worship we give Him? No, He doesn't. Dapat katanggap-tanggap sa Diyos yung worship natin. He doesn't receive it because your heart is so good. You know, um, God desires obedience more so than sacrifice. And so yung heart talaga ni Nadab and Abihu, they were in wrong. They offered their own fire instead of the fire that came from God. So, uh, at hindi lang yon. Kung basahin mo yung Leviticus chapter 10, malamang they were drunk. Lasing sila, so they were drunkards. And they were uh, rebellion against God, and so God dealt with them judgment from Him. Now, tingnan mo yung judgment ng Panginoon. Sila lang ba ang naapektuhan sa judgment ng Panginoon? Tingnan mo yung sinabi ng verse number 4 sa katapusan. And they had no children. You see? The generation that was supposed to come from them was affected because of their sin. So, here's a lesson. Sin spoils service. Sin destroys service for God. So, be careful when we serve the Lord that we do not sin to the point where God has to judge us and remove us. So itong hindi nauunawaan ng mga evangelical churches ngayon. Bakit meron tayong standards for service? Why do we have standards for service? You know why? We don't want Nadab and Abihu serving in the tabernacle drunk. At some point, you have to have standards. If you have low standards or high standards, it doesn't matter. You, by the way, every job has a standard. Okay, so I look at Jenica for example. They have do they have to be college graduate? That's a standard. Do they have to know English? Do they have to know English well, or can they just say Taglish? That's a standard. Oh, so yung buong mundo may standard yan. Maglaro tayo ng basketball. Oh, kahit kahit anong tira, pwede ba? No. May rules ang basketball. May foul. <laughs> may timer. Pero pagdating sa church, walang standard. Ha? Bobo yun. That is foolishness. The whole world depends on standards of conduct. Military? May standard of conduct ba yung military? Yes! Pag sinabi, bobombahan natin ng bomba at 0.55. Oh, standard yun. Hindi yung, sige na lang, bubumbay natin yan bukas. <laughs> Anong klaseng military? <laughs> Kung walang standard of, standard operating procedure. 
The whole world has standards of operating procedure, except church. We don't have standard for dress. We don't have standard for time. We don't have standard for nothing. That is not reality. Kaya huwag kayong ma- 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 magulat o matakot kung may standard talaga tayo. We have to maintain standard. Otherwise, mag-graduate tayo ng mga men na lasinggero na hindi marunong mag-preach at sila ang preach We have a lot of Nadab and Abihu in evangelicalism today. We do not want that in our church because God is worthy. And we don't offer strange fire. At dapat natin ialay yung binigay sa atin ng Diyos. That's all. You don't compare your, your offering to somebody else's offering. Kasi iba yung blessing ng Diyos sa kanila sa'yo. And God does not require their blessing from you. God only requires what He gives you. There's nothing. You don't give Him something He hasn't given you first. So if God has given you something, you give it back to Him. That's called a gift. Your, your return to Him. What He gave. Now you can be foolish and say, I wish I can give the way she gives or he gives. But that is foolishness. He, God does not require from you what He does not put in you. But thank God, whatever God puts in you, you can give it back to Him. And gladly give it back to Him. And give it to Him in a spirit of excellence. So... <clears throat> daming principle, pati children na nila nawala, wala silang children walang iniwan na children, that's sad that's sad lalo na yung future generation na apektuhan so let me tell you again, sin spoils future generations sin and Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron their father, verse 5 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near. Okay, all right. So mga Levites, come over here. All right, here we go. And present them before Aaron, the priest, that they may minister unto him. The role of the Levites is to minister to the priests. And they shall keep his charge and the charge of the whole congregation before the tabernacle of the congregation to do service Of the tabernacle. So within the tribe of Levi, a portion will be priests. Kasama na dyan yung high priest. There's only one high priest. And ito yung uh, Levites. Within the tribe of Levi, there are Levites and priests. And the Levites are to minister to the priests. Sila yung assistant nila. <clears throat> and uh, verse number 9, And thou shalt give the Levites unto Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel. And thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons. And they shall wait on their priest's office. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. So walang pwedeng hindi. Hindi ka pwedeng hindi Israelite. The worship of the tabernacle is exclusive to the tribe of Levi and within the Levites are the priests. And everybody who serves the tabernacle and no foreigners are allowed. Verse number 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, and I, and I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead. That's a very important word. Instead or in the place of substitution. Of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix among the children of Israel, therefore the Levites shall be mine. So, ilan yung tribes ng Israel? There were 12 tribes. So in the 12 tribes, one tribe belongs to the Lord as a representative. So lahat ng mga firstborn, every firstborn belongs to the Lord. Pero, hindi niya, hindi niya tinawag lahat ng firstborn na mag-serve sa tabernacle. Yun lang mga Levites. At represented lahat sa mga Levites. Okay? God owns everybody. But He doesn't want everybody serving in the tabernacle. So He appointed the firstborn of the Levites to represent everybody. 
So, instead is the key word in verse number 12. Verse number 13. Because all the firstborn are mine. For on the day that I smote all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, I hallowed me unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man, even beast, but the animals, and beast, mine shall, be, shall they be, I am the Lord. God owns all the firstborn, even the animals, the firstborn animals. That belongs to the Lord. Ngayon, ang gagawin ng Panginoon, ire-represent niya lahat ng mga firstborn sa tribe ng Levites, sa mga firstborn ng Levites. Verse 14, And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Number the children of Levi. So naalala ninyo, in chapter 2, binilang yung mga tribes, ang hindi lang binilang yung Levites. Well, in chapter 3 and 4, bibilangin na yung Levites. So now it's their turn to be numbered. Number the children of Levi, verse 15, after the house of their fathers, by their families, every male from a month old and upward. So in chapter 3, ang bibilangin talaga, one month, pataas. This is all the Levites. One month, upward. In chapter 3, God wants everyone numbered. In chapter 4, just the 30-year-olds and to 50-year-olds that will actually serve in the tabernacle. So don't be confused. There are two numberings for the Levites. All the Levite firstborn and all the Levite males and all the, the chapter 4, all the 30-year-old to 50-year-old that will actually serve in the tabernacle. So, you cannot serve in the tabernacle yung standard ng Panginoon until you are 30 years old. So, in war, naalala ninyo in chapter 2, how old do you have to be to join the military, the army? 20 years old. So, do you see the standard of God? Military, 20. Tabernacle, 30. Oh. Ano kaya yung standard natin <laughs> sa lipunan natin ngayon? <laughs> 18. Pwede nang pumasok sa army. Graduate ng Bible College, pastor na. Yun ang kultura natin. Tinatawag natin pastor kaagad. Yung graduate, wala pang asawa, wala pang pamilya, wala pang mga anak. Violation ng 1 Timothy chapter 3. Pero kaagad natin tinatawag na pastor. We need to correct that. We need to be biblical. God has a standard. Okay? So, eh, paano kung wala naman siya sa standard? Di ba mong tawagin pastor? Kahit na pilitin mo, pinipilit tayo ng kultura natin, we have to become biblical. Lalo na pag alam mo yung salita ng Diyos. Ngayon, kung hindi mo alam ang salita ng Diyos, sumusunod ka lang sa naririnig mo, that's, I can understand that. Binibigyan, pinagbibigyan ko na lang yan. But the reality is, God has a standard for what is a pastor. And we need to honor His words, His standard, as honoring to the Lord. Kaya wag niyong tawagin pastor yung nag-graduate ng Bible College na, you know, if you graduated Bible College, God bless you, amen, wonderful, you started something, you learned how to finish well, Amen. Continue. Keep on going for the Lord. When God gives you a wife or a family, Amen. Then you can enter the ministry and be called pastor. So anyway, standards. Everybody's got standards. God has. We need to find out what His standards are and apply that to everything. Alright, so E paano, Brother Bill, kung yung tao hindi binigyan ng anak? Di, hindi siya tinawag na magpastor. That's simple. In Leviticus nga, na, na, natuklasan natin kapag may blemish yung, tat, yung lalaki, hindi siya pwede mag-serve sa tabernacle. E di, huwag siya magpare. Pwede, pwede naman siya, basta libay siya, pwede siya mag-serve. Huwag lang yung pare. It's the same in the church. If a guy is not married and he doesn't have children, he cannot be pastor. It doesn't mean he can't serve. He can be a preacher. He can be a teacher. He just can't pastor. Why? God's standards. Read the scriptures. Follow the Bible, not the culture. So, iba, ta- iba talaga yung culture ng church 
sa lipunan. And we need to become very biblical. And we need to trust the Lord. We need to, we need to show God we trust you regardless of the situation. And God blesses His word. All right, so let's see. Um, verse number f- uh, 14, And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Number the children of Israel after the house of their fathers by their families every male, a month old and upward, thou shalt number them. And Moses numbered them according to the word of the Lord, as he commanded. It's one of the greatest verses. <laughs> Moses did what God said to do. Amen. And that should be someone's life verse. <laughs> and Moses numbered them according to the word of the Lord as he commanded. Verse 17, and these were the sons of Levi by their name. So now God identifies the, within the tribe of Levites, these are the names. There's Gershon, there's Kohath, and there is Marari. So, ngayon, ipapakita ng Diyos kung saan sila ilalagay sa pwesto nila. All right? Verse 18, these are the names of the sons of Gershon by families, Libni and Shimei, the sons of Kohath by families, Amram, Ezrahar, Hebron, and Uzael, and the sons of Merari by their families, Mali and Mushi. All right, so if you're looking for names for children, I am Mushi. <laughs> Anong pangalan ng anak mong cute niya? Is Mushi. <laughs> oh, unique. Saan mo nakuha yun? Ah, sa Book of Numbers, chapter 3. Wow. Anyway, these are the families of Levites according to the house of their fathers. It's not too late, Ate. Mushi. Girl, eh, wala nang yung inyong mga girl boy. All right, 21. Let's see, uh, verse 21 of Gershon. All right, so we got Gershon here. Tingnan mo ang verse 23. The families of the Gershonites shall pitch behind the tabernacle westward. Okay, so north. West, so yung Gershonites, dito pala sila. Oh, Gershonites. Westward. They will serve on the west side of the tabernacle. Tandaan natin yung gate ng tabernacle palaging nasa west, east. Nasa east. So, una, hinarang ng Diyos yung likod. God protected the back. South, uh, the westward. Okay? All right, then verse 27, you have the Kohath family. The Kohath family, tingnan mo ang verse number 29. Verse 29, the families of the sons of Kohath shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle <coughs> southward. Oh, ito yung southward. So, dito pala yung Kohathites. You see, God is highly organized. Verse 33 of Merari. Tingnan mo ang verse 35. Verse 35. The chief of the house of the father of the families of Merari was Zeriel, the son of Abihail. These shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle northward. Northward. So north. Ito naman yung Merarites. 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 So yun yung tatlong tribes. Gershon, Kohath, and Mary. Mer- Merari. All right? So, tinakpan ng Diyos yung mga gilid. Ito lang yung is sino nandito? Aaron and his sons. Si Aaron at saka yung tatlo niya, dalawa dalawa ng anak na nagtili. Tanda na kasi ni David ba yung nasunog na hinato sila ng Diyos. Ang nanatili si Itamar at saka si Eleazar. So, they will occupy the east, the entrance to the tabernacle. All right. So again, the Lord protects every angle, and you can see the tribes protecting the tabernacle. And you remember the theology: God is always in the midst. Remember that. So now, uh, ano naman yung mga tungkol nila? What are their responsibilities? Well, tignan natin yung Gershonites. So the Gershonites, tignan mo ang Numbers chapter three, verse number twenty-five. Chapter three, verse twenty-five. The charge of the sons of Gershon in the tabernacle of the congregation shall be the tent, the tabernacle, the tent, the covering, so yung takip, thereof, and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, the hangings of the court, yung mga kortina, the curtain of the door of the court, which is by the tabernacle, by the altar roundabout, the cords, pati yung mga tali, 
and for the service thereof. So, kapag tinanggal nila yung kampo, Gershonites, kayo ang bahala sa mga kortina. It, kayo ang responsible niyan. So you see how God delegates responsibility. So, if you want organization, managerial experience, basahin mo yung Bible, implement the Bible. And you will see that many hands make work easier. Okay? Verse 27, the Kohats. What about the Kohathites? What are their responsibilities? Verse 31. Verse 31. And their charge, and their charge shall be the ark. Ayong box sa Holy of Holies. Kohathites lang ang pwedeng gumalaw doon. The table and the candlestick and the altars and the vessels of the sanctuary when they're ministered and the hanging. Pati pala yung curtain sa gitna, yung curtain na nagsa-separate between the holy place and the holy of holies. Kohathites pala ang hahawak doon. And all the service thereof. Okay? So, outward furniture, Gershonite, inside furniture, Kohathites. Ano naman yung Merorites? Uh, verse 36. And under the custody and charge of the sons of Merari be the boards of the tabernacle. And the bars, and the pillars, and the sockets, and the vessels thereof. So, yung mabibigat na mga bars, yung mga... Uh, gates, mga bars, ganyan. That's merarites. Sa mga meraris pala yun. Sockets, pins, cords. Everybody has a place of service. Everybody has a responsibility. What is your responsibility of service? Do you perform your responsibility of ministry excellently? Oh. Yung mga kohatites, pwede ba nilang gawin yung gershonites? Hindi. Naka-designate yung role ng Kurt, uh, Kohatites sa Gershonites sa Merarites. And so, know where the Lord has placed you in His service and execute your ministry towards the Lord. Everybody has a place of ministry. Verse 38. But those that encamp before the tabernacle toward the east, even before the tabernacle of the congregation eastward, shall be Moses and Aaron his sons. Keep the charge of the sanctuary for the charge of the children of Israel, and the stranger that cometh night shall be put to death. Parang refrain chorus. <laughs> Anybody else that comes near, kill them. <laughs> All that were numbered of the Levites, which most uh, Aaron numbered at the command of the Lord throughout their families, all the males from a month old upward, were twenty and two thousand. And the Lord said unto Moses, Number all the firstborn males of the children of Israel from a month old and upward, and take the number of their names. Thou shalt take the names of the Levites for me. I am the Lord, instead of all the firstborn of the children of Israel, and the cattle and the Levites, instead of all the firstlings among the cattle of the children of Israel. And Moses numbered as the Lord commanded him, all the firstborn of the children of Israel and all the firstborn males. By the number of names from a month old upward, those that numbered among them were twenty and two thousand and two hundred and three score and thirteen. Verse 44, verse 44, Numbers chapter 3, verse 44. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thee the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and cattle and the Levites instead of their cattle, and the Levites shall be mine, I am the Lord. Pero verse 46, tingnan mo nakasulat dito. And for those that are to be redeemed of the 203 score and 13 of the firstborn of the children of Israel, which were more than the Levites. So, sabi niya, bilangin mo lang ng firstborn dito para sa, 12, sa 11 tribes, eh may extra. Mas marami yung mga firstborn ng 11 tribes kesa sa representation nila sa Levites. May kulang. Ilan yung kulang? Sabi niya, um, kulang ng 203 score 13. 203 score 13. So what is that? Ano ang 203 score 13? 200, 3 score, 3 score 60. 13 plus 13, 273. Oh. So may kulang. Mas marami yung mga firstborn ng tribes kesa sa Levites ngayon. Anong gagawin natin? Kasi walang katapat yung mga firstborn na ito. Wala silang katapat na firstborn na tatakip sa kanila. So sabi ni Moses, tinamo yung principle 
ng shekel. Principle of the shekel. Verse 47. Thou shalt even take five shekels apiece by the pole after the shekel of the sanctuary shalt thou take. The shekel is 20 giras. <laughs> so, kailangan magbayad ng shekels yung mga parents na gustong magkaroon ng representation ng Levites. So, pera yun. That's a... We don't know specifically kung ano ang shekel sa gira. Yung gira, bahagi ng shekel. So, we don't know what they are. Pero ang principle ay kailangan takpan ng representation itong 273. Eh, wala ng Levites. Naubos na yung mga Levites. 22,000 lang ang Levites. 22,273 yung mga tribo. So ngayon, pilak, shekel, silver, ang magiging kapalit. So kung bayaran ng mga parents yung shekel offering, na-redeem, natakpan ng representation yung 273. So bakit mahalaga ito? Why is it significant? Kasi si Jesus Christ ang nagbayad para takpan niya tayo. You see? So, nagpa-practice ba tayo ng shekel offering? <laughs> may tithes, may offerings, pero shekel offering, wala pa. Oh. Kailangan ba natin mag-collect ng shekel offering? Hindi na. Why? Kasi Jesus Christ is our payment. He is our shekel redemption. Oh, you see? So we don't do the shekel offering. <clears throat> I know other places I'll do the shekel offering, but not here. This is a part of the ceremonial aspects. And Jesus is our payment. Jesus paid it all. All to Him I owe. And so yan ang principle of redemption. By the way, silver, redemption, bakit silver ang kapalit para sa buhay ni Kristo. Remember what they paid Judas? They paid him what? 30 pieces of silver. A shekel. Kapalit ni Jesus Christ. Oh, buhay niya, ito, bayaran namin. In shekels. Nako, napaka-holy ng mga Pharisees that they offered a shekel offering. Hypocrite sila. At ngayon, sila walang redeemer. Sila ang walang redeemer. So, nasa impyerno yung, yung mga yon Pati si Judas. You see? But everyone who believes on the Lord is covered by the Lord. And He is our offering. In our place. Gaya ng the Levite firstborn is instead of the 12 tribes or the 11 tribes. Powerful picture of redemption. <clears throat> okay. All right. Verse 49, Moses took the redemption money of them that were over and above them that were redeemed of the Levites. So you have that satisfying the ceremonial shekel offering, uh, redemption. Numbers chapter 4, Numbers chapter 4. So again, it's similar to chapter 3, except yung chapter 3 is one month pataas. Yung chapter 4, 30 year old hanggang 50 year old na magiging assistant talaga. They, they begin the, temp, the tabernacle service at 30 years old. Hanggang 50. Pag 50 na, retire na. Hindi na, hindi na pwede mag-serve. Pwede na lang silang mag-observe. <laughs> Not serve, but observe. So anyway, uh, Numbers chapter 4, verse 1, The Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi after their families, by the house of their fathers from 30 years old and upward even until 50 and all that enter into the host to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation this shall be the service of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation about the most holy things and so on and so forth some of abasa mo ito you can take your time and read the rest and how God designated the Kohathites to take care of the holy things but only those that are 30 years old and up That is, uh, only the priest can take care of the holy things. Tapos yung Gershonites, manual service, verse 24. Verse 
chapter, Numbers chapter 4, verse 24. This is the service of the families of the Gershonite to serve for burdens. So they are not, they are not for sacrifices. They are for services, burden. So yung mabibigat, sila ang hahawak doon. And they are responsible to, for that. Merarites, sila ang mag sila ang boards at chaka frames it's a re, almost a reiteration of chapter 3 look at verse 31 chapter 4 verse 31 this is the charge of their burden according to all their service in the tabernacle of the congregation the boards of the tabernacle and the bars and the pillars thereof and the sockets thereof so that would be the merarites okay uh, again active membership from 30 year old to 50 tapos yung bilang nila so kohatites had 2,750 according to verse 36. Gershonites had 2,630 according to verse 40. And the Merarites had 3,200 according to verse 44. Total workforce ng tabernacle, you see how highly organized God is. He knows them by name. He knows them by number. He knows what their role and responsibility is. God is a God of order. Ang total workforce nila, 8,000. So, Levi tribe, 8,580. Do you think if you have 8,580 workers, you can get things done? No kaya maging Sunday school natin kung meron tayo? 8,580 na dedicated, holy, sanctified, dedicated to God workers. Do you think that would be a testimony unto the Lord? Kaya ingatan natin yung ministry na binigay sa atin ng Diyos. Wala tayo dito sa bilang. Iilan lang tayo. Pero pakita natin sa Diyos na kung ano yung ministry na ilagay niya sa kamay natin, gagawin natin ang the best according to His standards. Kasi hindi naman tayo hahatulan ng Diyos sa standard nito. Hahatulan tayo ng Diyos sa binigay sa atin. And there's no sense comparing. All right. Next week, we're at chapter 5. Oh, see? 5? Siguro, may ikli na lang yung mga chapters na yan. Baka maabot natin yung chapter 9. I don't know. Let's pray. Ask God to bless them. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you that you are highly organized and that you know people by their names. You know people by their numbers. You know everyone's roles and responsibilities. Lord, I pray you strengthen us, Lord, to be diligent in the things that you have gifted us in as you require us the things that you put in us. Help us to be surrendered vessels to you. We love you, Lord. Encourage our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.